right. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another one of our interviews. Um, today, we are going to be interviewing Jennifer Nielsen. She is the New York Times bestselling author of the Ascendant series, the Traders Game series, and many other titles, including several historical novels. She lives in northern Utah with her family and enjoys old books, good theater, and lazy days in the mountains. So everybody give a huge warm welcome to Jennifer Nielsen. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for having me here. This is exciting. Yeah, we're yeah. so excited to have you. <laughs> yeah, this is really fun. Okay, so... Let's just dive into the questions. All right. Um, some of these questions are from us or they're from some of our Instagram followers. And so, um, let me find, okay. Um, our first question is when did you start writing? Uh, I think I always was like, even before I knew all the letters for things like, my mom has stories that I would create for my brother who was in kindergarten, which means I would have been four and they weren't good. I mean, <laughs> but it was, but it was, I mean, and I don't think they were words, but it was a beginning. And, and I think for me, the stories have always been in my head and that desire to write. What I didn't have is uh, something like teen author boot camp to say, Hey, look, this is real. And, and so for me, it was always like, oh, it's a hobby or that's just fun. I didn't know it could end with me becoming published, but I always was writing. That is so fun. I was the same way until like seventh grade. And my friend told me she was writing a book and I was like, oh, that's what these are. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because when you're a writer, right, your brain is your normal. And so you think it's normal for everyone to have stories in their head. It's normal for everyone to just kind of daydream characters and plots. And because it's normal, it doesn't feel special. And so it's like, well, why would I write? That's just anybody, anybody does this. And we don't recognize that there is a uniqueness to the writer's brain. Yeah, for sure. Um, what made you want to become a writer? Uh, I think it was the, the first time I really sincerely thought about it was sixth grade. And it was uh, the discovery of the book, The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton, because I fell in love with this book. And it's the first time when I looked up the author, it wasn't, you know, somebody who led this rich and famous life. It wasn't somebody who lived on a beach in Maine with their dog. It wasn't some dead guy, you know, it was this, teenage girl from Oklahoma and she felt real to me and I thought well if she can be a writer why can't I and and so that was really the very first time I thought seriously uh, about doing this that's so cool okay um how do you come up with the names that you use for your books it could be like the names of places characters families etc yeah. Okay. So the first way is a uh, symbolic. So uh, some names are chosen because I like the meaning of them. So Audra in Words on Fire, she gets her name because in Lithuanian, her name means storm and her language is illegal. And so I love the idea of this girl named Storm, whose very name is illegal to be spoken aloud because it's also her language. And so there was a symbolism to that that I really liked. Uh, some names are just chosen, you know, out of baby name books. And so like in A Night Divided, right? I'm just Googling popular German names from the 1950s when those characters would have been born. And then I'm looking for names that I can pronounce, that sound German, that feel like my character. And then other names are just made up. It's just... Uh, combining letters in my mind until it sounds like uh, the name or the place that I want. So a lot of my fantasy names and certainly the fantasy places are made up, but it's, it's not so complex. Like I'm going to show you a trick. If you're having trouble coming up with like an original name, this would be just a trick you can do. So um, I live in Utah, right? And so one thing you can do is this, I don't know if this is looking backwards, but if so, it's hot. <laughs> but we got Utah 
And then if I want to change something, I might say, okay, I'm gonna change one letter. So maybe the H becomes an R and now it's Utar, but that doesn't quite sound like what I want. So I might make this an O and then I'm gonna say, well, I've got to put some letter on in front of it. Um, so I'll do an SH, Shotar, and then I'll add an A, Shotara. And in just a few steps from Utah, we have a completely original place name. And so for anybody who struggles, that's just a quick trick you can do to create original names. Just start with familiar and one letter at a time. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> definitely going to use that. Oh, and it's just fun. Like you're bored, you know, just start doodling away. It's fun. Yeah, that is so cool. <laughs> Thank you. I used to um, like write down the first letters of sentences and mm. like, so in song lyrics. And then I would write them like all horizontally yeah. and try to make puzzles out of them to figure out what could be a good name. <laughs> Really well, why not? I mean, anything that gets you to a name that you love, that's the right way to do it. So if it worked, awesome. Yeah. Well, it worked less times than it did, but, <laughs> but when it worked, it was cool. Right. <laughs> Usually I just use name generators, but yeah. <laughs> those don't always work the way you want them to. So. But they're great. They're, they're great. And, uh, and sometimes you get the name generator and you're like, but that sparks a different way of doing it. That works too. What is your favorite genre to write and why? Uh, you know, okay, so I was writing fantasy and I love writing fantasy. And then all of a sudden one day I gave my editor a historical novel and she's like, you don't write historical, like you write fantasy. And I'm like, no, I don't write insert genre here. I just write. And, and to me, it's the same thing as like, if you're a soccer player, can you also play basketball? You know, of course you can. And so, uh, but she was really kind of hung up on the, you need a genre. So I'm like, fine, I'm going to create my own genre, uh, which is danger. I just write about characters who are in a lot of danger. And in that way, um, I can write pretty much whatever I want. They're just always in danger. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, how do you get inspired to write a new idea? Because, because holding an idea in my head, it's like not scratching an itch. You know, if you've got that itch and you are just like, it's just on your mind and, and you're like, nope, not gonna scratch, not gonna scratch. All it does is sits there and tortures you, right? And uh, so for me, once that idea is in my head, I've got to write it down. It, it literally is just, it's got to get on paper and I've got to start. And once I start, I feel like I've got the characters in so much trouble. I owe it to them to get them out of the trouble, which is why I end. Uh, and so for me, I'm just happiest when I'm able to write. Yeah, That is currently me because I'm going into my senior year of high school and I have three ideas that I want to write, but they're all sitting there unitched because college. Yeah. And you know what? And you've got that. Like there's, that's just the reality. You have to deal with that, but I know it's driving you crazy, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I get it. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, you go ahead. <laughs> whenever I'm writing, whenever someone asks me what I write, I'll be like, oh, I'm writing this and this and this and this. And they'll be like, how do you write that many things? And I'm like, how can I not write that many things? Yeah. I'm doing this and this and this and this too. And and I think there's something really awesome about it because if you're stuck in one project, you can move to another. Or if one is really serious and one is really fun, you can kind of go to where your mood is that day. And, and it also means you can be at different phases in projects so that you're not always just first draft. You can say, well, I'm going to research for a bit or I'm going to work on the rewrite for a bit. So to me, it's creatively really helpful to have multiple projects going. So I love that we all kind of have that same thing. <laughs> um, so I have had the Traders game on my list for forever, and I finally started reading it recently. Um, and something that stuck out to me was like the distinctive voice that Kestra has as she narrates. Um, 
which to me feels like it stands out among other fantasy books I've read. And I also took your class on developing the author's voice at the conference in March. Awesome. Um, so now I'm wondering, how do you develop your character's voice and how is it both similar and different to your author's voice? Uh, okay, so this is, this is the way that I think I can explain it, that it's going to make the most sense. Um, I don't actually come at writing from a literature background or a language arts background. I come at writing from a theater background. That's, uh, you too, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing this light up of your face. Um, like I am a trained actor much more than I am a trained writer. And so I come at character uh, the way I would approach character as an actor. That's just my instinct. And so, okay, me as an author, that is me as an actor. And, and me as an actor, I'm always going to uh, pull from myself to create character. But when I portray a character on stage, I am not Jennifer Nielsen on stage. I am that character. All right, and so it's the same way that I create voice and I make decisions the way an actor would make decisions of where does this character carry their energy? And is this somebody who looks people in the eye or do they shy away? Is this a center stage character or an upstage left character? And, uh, and do they speak boldly um, with authority? And, and so I start to put that character on uh, the way I would put on a character on stage. And, and in that way, they develop their own voice. It's still me, but it's, it's not because I've got the costume on. Does that make sense at all? Yeah, that like totally just clicked because it's exactly what I do. I just didn't realize it. <laughs> yeah, okay. And, and every actor is going to be like that. And if, and if you're not that actor, then you say, okay, I, I at least get when I see an actor on stage, it's not them. It's their costume. Same thing. Yeah. That's super cool. <laughs> Thank you. Can I just say, I've noticed this passion about you. You're just so passionate about everything. And it's just so fun to be able to see and to talk to you about. <laughs> so back to theater. Uh, my sophomore year, um, Mrs. Welch was the teacher. And she had this big sign at the front of her room. And it says, um, Ralph Waldo Emerson said, nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. And at the start of every single theater class, we had to say that. And we had to say it until we said it enthusiastically. And something about that stuck with me. And, and that enthusiasm, that energy for what I do, uh, I, I do what I love. And so how could that enthusiasm not come through? Like, I love talking about writing. I love talking about writing with young people. This is awesome. <laughs> we love talking about it with you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay, so we are running out of time. We have six no. minutes left. Unfortunately, it's been like, time's gone by so fast. So we're just gonna kind of do a lightning round. I yeah. Guess. Okay. Um, how do you create compelling and original characters? Uh, you create uh, characters with a, a very clear mission, something they want that is very clear and uh, very easy for the reader to identify. And then you make them um, need it, that, that thing that they want. It needs to be life or death to them. Even if it's like being chosen as homecoming queen, it needs to be the most important thing in their life. And then you make them more likely to lose. And you do that and you have the seeds for a great character. I like that. That's good advice. Thank you. What's your best trick for beating writer's block? Oh, I'm sorry. I cannot do this in lightning round, but I am going to totally solve this for you guys if because I actually like get writer's block and it's going to take a minute and I'm sorry, but it's worth it. OK, I got to pull out my stupid notebook again. <laughs> all right. So we all know the structure of a story, right? We start here and it's just amazing. And if everybody, you know, could just see the picture in your head, they're just going to be blown away and you can't wait to write. And the ending is going to be epic and it's going to blow people's minds if you get to it. But too often we don't because right here in the middle, 
we hit writer's block. And I call it the muddy middle because it's like every word is like trolling through mud. And, you know, you're looking at your character going, what should we do? And your character's looking at you and saying, I don't know, what do you want to do? And you just stare at each other. All right. Now, every plot is a problem that needs to be solved, right? But when you get writer's block right here, it's because your character doesn't have enough problems. They have this problem, but you can't solve this problem till the end of the book right here. Your character needs a problem. So uh, we become cruel authors and we ask ourselves, what is the meanest thing I can do to my character right now? Like, do you need to kill somebody they love? or they need to be betrayed or lost or their house blows up or whatever it is right here. You do something horrible to your character. It should pull you out of that writer's block because now they have an immediate problem and you will finish your story, your story. Wow. That's really cool. My yeah. <laughs> about all the problems I could like throw in my character's way because yeah, I yeah. horrible, I horrible things. Lost. Yeah. <laughs> yes. If you're not making the reader cry, are you doing a good job? <laughs> you know, we, we want to be nice people, but nobody wants to read a book from a nice author. Yeah, yeah right? for sure. Okay. Um, where is your favorite place to write? I don't actually care. If it's quiet, I will write anywhere. So I don't, I'm not picky. <laughs> What's your comfort book? Ah, oh, my comfort book, the Harry Potter series. Um, I can just go there and it's just like going home and, and just finding joy. Okay. What are your favorite foods to eat when you're writing? <laughs> well, um, nothing that I should eat, right? <laughs> like I could go through peanut M&Ms like water. In fact, faster than water, uh, because it's just this mindless sort of a thing. So I try to keep those um, not so close. And uh, apples, I love while writing. Also, just kind of a mindless um, sort of a thing. Um, and uh, diet Mountain Dew gets me through some tough scenes. Nice. What do you do when you're not writing? Uh, I love watching movies with my family or just hanging out with the family. I love being up in the mountains. I love reading, of course. Um, and I love like collecting old books, collecting old things. I think that's just a blast. Okay. Where can people find you online? All right. So um, my website, it's my name. So jennielsen.com, J-E-N-N-I-E-L-S-E-N.com. On Twitter and on Instagram, I am at Nielsen Writer. Uh, you can find me by my name on Facebook. Um, but the easiest way to connect with me is definitely just through my website on the contact me button, because then you get me directly. Okay. And finally, where can people find your books? Uh, anywhere that you like to find books, you should be able to find them. And if they're not there, just ask and complain and throw some sort of tantrum until they start stocking those books. But uh, wherever you like to buy books, you should be able to find them. Nice. Okay. Awesome. We are unfortunately out of time. It has been so fun talking with you. I could go on and on all day. <laughs> Thank but you. Unfortunately, we only had 20 minutes. So thank you so much for coming. Well, thank you. And thanks for everyone for watching. All right. Have a wonderful evening.